Hello, Jesse Good here. Today we're taking a look at the LEGO Powerpuff Girls Mojo Jojo Strike Set with 228 pieces, three minifigures, and it retails for $30 in the United States. I got it from Target, and I'll take a look at those minifigures. So here is Mojo Jojo, and I love this minifigure, so I want to start out with him since I want him back in the LEGO Mentions days. I should have probably included him in my top 10 missing minifigures video. He has this cape, which is a newer cut cape. Um, unfortunately, the older fabric, so it could get damaged easily which has purple on the outside and then pink on the inside. The back of his torso also has a nice printed design as well. But the best part about him is his head mold, which is a unique head mold. It connects to a Lego neck just like any other, but it has these two plastics right here with green and very intricate printing at the front and then green ears and just the black kind of surrounding it. And this front, or sorry, this top part is so cool. So they just literally gave him four studs up top so that's pretty funny and then you could attach this little build to kind of top off his head for his crown or whatever you want to call it and the design of this has some nice kind of a printing on it all around almost like an r2d2 slash astromech print so overall a very neat minifigure and i'm glad how this turned out we also have a blossom minifigure which the design of this is literally just the same one from lego dimensions head mold and everything, which in my opinion is kind of lame. You have that printed stripe on the back as well, which you can't see too well, and also these roller skates, but I kind of wish they did another mouth design or something like that, you know, just to show another expression. That would have been cool in my opinion, but uh, we do have this one by two printed Powerpuff Girls phone, if anybody needs help. That's a nice exclusive print, as well as some roller blades for Blossom at the bottom. There's also Buttercup, which again, same design from LEGO Dimensions, which is kind of disappointing, but uh, she has a molded head, some printing on the back of her torso, and yeah, just something we saw in the LEGO Dimensions uh, single pack. We also have Donnie the Unicorn, which was a controversial character. I'm kind of surprised they made him because he just had got a lot of backlash. I don't know why I don't watch this new reboot. That I gave it a chance, and the older one's just so much better. But uh, we do have a printed eye right there as a one by one tile, and I think those are exclusive to the set for that particular design. I actually like the design of this guy though. Um, he has a nice tail right here, which that is a reprint of the Unikitty one, but in that yellow coloring, and also some kind of a double cheese slopes to represent his mane or whatever. So yeah, a nice interesting figure. Not technically a minifigure, but might as well include him since he is a character. All right, now I'm getting a little bit derivative, including this guy, but this is the drone. I was like, okay, we included the brick-built Donnie. Might as well take a little minifigure look at this drone, robot, whatever you want to call it. And he has a dynamite, and I like how they use these little arms right here, which you can move up and down. Nice part usage for that. So here are all the separate builds of the set. There's the two stores for the set. The jewelry store has a sticker that shows Mojo Jojo is not allowed in here on the door and also a jewelry sticker just for the sign. On this side right here, we have a camera which you can move up and down. And I love the use of aqua for the pieces at the roof, especially this quarter of a circle right here in that aqua color. Very nice piece to get in that color. We have this wall right here, which is actually a panel that can be broken open just by pushing this lever and pops open just like that. Then inside the jewelry store, we have a jewel in here in this translucent pink coloring, and then the heart-shaped jewel in this translucent uh, kind of aqua coloring right there. Also, there's a sticker that shows Mojo Jojo on the security screen, and up top is kind of where they suggest to put that little robot, just about like right here, and just have it monitor or take over the jewelry store. And so they give you enough space to add that there with some studs. So here is the ice cream stand. I love the brick built ice cream on the left of the stand. There's some nice frozen treats on the outside with a popsicle, as well as on the inside with just some more kind of ice cream tops and stuff like that. A little printed part there. A nice uh, one by two printed $100 bill, which is classic to Lego cash register. Now this right here though is a nice play feature where it shoots ice cream. You just push down on here and Holy crud, that went flying. And just in case you lose it, like I probably just did right now, they give you an extra one to put on there. Never really seen when they use one of these with a little garbage pail piece, or sorry, a bucket pail piece. So that's kind of clever. For the vehicles, we have Mojo Jojo's getaway car, which has a sticker up front, a stud shooter on the side, 
and this walkie-talkie on the right side. Now, the design of this is about the same size as, say, a LEGO Dimensions vehicle, and you have enough space to just kind of fit Mojo Jojo standing up on there, as well as a 2x2 two -two jumper, which you could use to steal some of the jewelry or even put his little robot friend. And if you want to steal the jewelry, you see it fits on just like that. So that's kind of clever, though I wish he did have the newer fabric of cape so that it wouldn't get so bent right here. Buttercup has a skateboard right here, which has the same colors as Bart Simpson's from the Simpsons Lego set, so that's kind of interesting. Oh, and since Mojo Jojo's getaway car has a handle on the back, you could have Buttercup hold on to it and just kind of tail on into it with that a little skateboard. Either way, that's it for the build altogether. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. So here is the box for the set, a nice $20 box size that they reuse for $30 sets. And you can see the back has all these little play features shown. As for the instructions, they have some interesting ads on the back with all the little characters and even their on-screen appearances. So I like how they're advertising that. Also, they have kind of a little comic feature of the features who play around with this. I like the design of that as well. But they have a Lego Life ad that this definitely seems targeted more towards girls, even with the little friends at the back. But I like how the colors on the front are a little bit gender neutral so that they could attract both audiences. So I just wish this set was $20. That would be the perfect price for this, and that would be like an A set. Because the builds, while they're not anything too amazing, they're really fun, they're small, they're quaint, great for a $20 set. The minifigures, you get some reprints, but you also get that great Mojo Jojo figure, which love the head mold on him. But yeah, this is 30 bucks, which is so ridiculous in my opinion. That really brings a set down because the builds aren't impressive enough for a $30 set. The builds aren't substantial enough for a $30 set, even all together with everything they throw in. Even though they include a lot of small little separate builds, it still builds up to like, okay, this is a $20 set at most. So that really ticks me off and I'd rate this one a C plus because of it, because it just doesn't feel like it's worth the $30. You could easily get a lot of these minifigures. The best part is definitely Mojo Jojo himself. But that figure, I would say, just try to get secondhand if you're not willing to spend that much on this set because there's so many other cheaper sets that come with so much more content, in my opinion. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.